Hi everybody, I'm Mark Moorhead. I'm the Curator of Education here at the Hall of Flame Museum of Firefighting here in Phoenix, Arizona. We're the world's largest historical firefighting museum and we got a great collection of firefighting memorabilia and trucks and hand pumpers and steamers and all that good stuff. And we love it when people come in and check out our, uh, our collection. But when you can't do that, we're also perfectly happy to bring our collection to you. And that's what we're gonna do a little bit today. Uh, we're going to start here in what happens to be my favorite gallery, which is Gallery 1, 19th century and earlier, hand and horse drawn. And we're going to start with the oldest big piece that we have here at the museum. And so a long time ago, for hundreds of years, or really probably for thousands of years, the main piece of firefighting equipment that there was in the world was this, the bucket. And everybody's seen it in the Western movies, right? The church is on fire and everybody in town lines up and they pass the buckets of water and the last person in line gets as close as he can to the fire, which usually isn't very close. He tries to throw the bucket of water on the fire. Terrible way to fight a fire, but it was all they had. And they got as organized with it as they could. But as population centers grew and population centers became more dense and cities and towns started to grow, they had a lot of incentive to try to come up with better ways, technological ways, to fight fires. We don't think about it much in this day and age, but in those days, open fire was much more a part of people's everyday lives. Pretty much everybody in the world had fire in their house pretty much every day. You had to, to heat your house, to light your house, to cook your food, a lot of jobs depended on fire. And also, houses really burned in those days. I mean, depending on where you were in the world, you were in a plank shack or a bamboo hut or a log cabin or whatever it was, and it was full of cloth and paper and who knows what else. So fires, they're still way too common, but they were much more common in those days. And so they had a lot of technological incentive, a lot of incentive to try to find a good solution to fires and to the problem of, of house fires. And the first really good way they came up with was this, machines like this. This is the oldest big piece here in the museum. Uh, it was built in England in 1725. So I always say to the little kids, this was built about seven years or so before George Washington was born. It was built uh, by a company called Newsham. Richard Newsham made lots and lots of these rigs. Machines like this actually were developed a little earlier in Holland in the mid to late 1600s. A man named Jan van der Heden developed these pumps in Amsterdam and they were very successful and other countries started knocking them off. And this is an English knockoff. And this was a very popular model. You would have seen this in colonial America. You would have seen this around the continent, the European continent. Peter the Great bought a bunch of these uh, for Imperial Russia. And the way it worked was, with this one, you still had the bucket brigade. You had to. Because, believe it or not, they developed these pumpers long before they developed good fire hose. Really good fire hose didn't come along until about 1820. And it, but prior to that, having a, a tube that was flexible but still watertight, that was really a puzzler. That was a, a kind of a tough nut to crack. So with this one, they didn't. They just kept the, uh, the bucket brigade going. But instead of the last guy in line feebly trying to throw his bucket of water onto the fire, he would pour it in here into this hopper. And it would fill up this tub which holds about 80 gallons or so of water. And then you'd have a crew of guys on either side pumping up and down like this. And if you had enough guys, you'd have some guys with their feet up here on this, these brake pedals to give you a little Stairmaster action. Now, in this casing here, there's a twin cylinder pump on a chain. It goes up and down, and that gives you a jet of water out of this rigid brass or copper pipe. You call it a, bra a branch pipe. So you get a big old uh, blast of water. It's a big old squirt gun, basically, is what it is. But it's a pretty powerful super soaker. If you really get this thing going, you can get about 60 gallons of water a minute out of this. And remember, the tub here only holds 80 gallons. So the, guy, the guys on the bucket brigade have to really fly and keep feeding out. Or if you don't, you're going to run out of water in just a couple of minutes. Now, 60 gallons of water today, by comparison to, you know, uh, modern pumps that give you hundreds and sometimes close to thousand, uh, thousands of gallons of water a minute, it seems pretty primitive. But the truth is, 
it was a huge leap forward over the bucket brigade. It was genius. Okay, and it's one of the things that changed the world. Like you can make the argument that it's one of the real unsung heroes of the Industrial Revolution are the hand pumpers because it enabled you to get, it enabled, it was one of the factors that enabled big population centers to grow. For better or worse, big metropolitan areas grew because they were able to control fire. And one of the biggest reasons they could control fire is machines like this. And if you look around the first part of Gallery 1 here at the Hall of Flame, you see they get bigger, they get prettier, they get fancier, they get some bells and whistles, they might get a, you know, a, you know, a, a nice uh, decoration to them or something like that. And they do get good fire hoses by about 1820, and that was a big leap too. But essentially, the technology is the same. It's guys on either side, you know, handles on either side, and guys on either side pumping up and down. And so that is, the, especially the first half of Gallery 1 here, that is the dominant technology. And it was the dominant technology, it was on the whole, the state of the art in firefighting, really for a couple of hundred years.